Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't been on here in a while. Um, <clears throat> so uh, today I wanted to go over like some like vinyl transmission notes, um, mostly because I'm, I'm an aspiring person in the field of my molecular biology. So um, I just wanted to go over some concepts. But before we begin, I have a little website on my YouTube page now. Um, let me share the, let me share my screen real quick. Share screen. Which one would this be? It's this one. All right, let's see how that looks on the, um, and I have my, my trusty whiteboard here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, perfect. All right, perfect. So this is just a bunch of notes that I've written down um, and I will put viral updates every couple of days just for various things. But this would be like our first, what you call it, lesson? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it just, it's right on my YouTube page. It's the first tab and uh, go give that a look. That's some good information there. Um, Sorry for my crazy hair. So today we're just gonna go over viral transmission. And viral transmission, I mean, is a, a very important aspect of, especially with like a global pandemic. But it's it's interesting because it's all done percentage wise. So, sorry, I'm just erasing my whiteboard. So it's all done percentage wise. So with RO, which is R0, which is the rate of transmission for an average virus or bacteria. Um, it's, yeah, it's done percentage wise. So like say, say a virus has a 2% a, a R0, a 2% R0. So it would look like this. So RO equals 2%. So let's see. I know you can see that, but RO equals 2%. And if RO equals 2%, that means the amount of people that get infected multiplies by two each time. So it would go, really go one, four, two, uh, one, four, and then so on, one, four, 16, or yeah. And then it would, yeah, it would multiply from there. Um, and then, really just recap it, but here, I'll, I'm gonna explain how a virus infects you. So really a virus is just kind of a, a non-living thing. It's, I mean, it's not like bacteria, bacteria moves around and things like this, this can't crawl. Um, it, it comes through respiratory droplets like this, so. Little viruses. I'm not a very good drawler, bear with me. So it comes through respiratory droplets and it can land in your nose, mouth, eyes. Um, it really wants to land in your nose, somewhere in your respiratory tract, especially if it's a respiratory virus. And in, in COVID's case, um, COVID-19 is caused by a virus called SARS-CoV-2. And in that case, it wants to infect two types of cells and it can only infect um, ACE2 receptors, which are angiotensin converting enzymes too, and they are um, basically amino acid protein receptors that are live on the cells of um, the respiratory tract. And, and COVID loves to infect ciliated cells and goblet cells. And ciliated cells have these these fibers, these big old fibers that look like this, and um, they 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 filter up mucus, pathogens. Um, non-pathogenic bacteria, non-pathogenic viruses to be swallowed. So if you swallow right now, you can probably feel some mucus in your throat, as everyone does, and it's because your cilia are making that stuff go up to your, your, uh, your throat there. And um, goblet cells produce mucus lining. So if there's a pathogen, the um, pathogen can get stuck in the mucus. It's your body's amazing. It's really designed to help you out. Um, sorry, just checking. So, 
So say this is a this is a cell in the respiratory tract, this big line right here. And the cell has these giant proteins. Well, not giant, but proteins, um, which are the ACE2 receptors, angiotensin converting enzymes. Um, and they kind of look like this. They kind of look like that. And what happens is the virus has these giant, like, um, protein spikes. And in this case, COVID has S spikes. So S spikes. So one of these equals an S spike. And it's interesting because the, sorry, this is my little virus here. It's interesting because these are actually just meant to carry the capsid, which is inside the virus, which looks like this. Kind of looks like that. Looks like this, and it holds the RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. And um, there it goes, it's sitting in there. And then the virus will come around like this, like this. The virus will come around like this. And then latch on to one of these guys. So latch on with using an, an ACE, or not an S spike, latching onto an ACE2 receptor. Again, angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And then it will enter the cell using a membrane vesicle, like this, enter the cell. And then what happens is it's, it's really quite interesting um, because this is constantly going on. It's constantly going on, which is the most interesting part to me. One sec, just check the chat. Um, oh, there goes my whiteboard. So it enters through this membrane vesicle and it will look like this. So there will be a little virus inside of here with little spikes and everything. And then it will bind with that vesicle. So it binds with the vesicle. And the, and the viral protein coat, which is the thing that um, holds the cap, it's caps it with inside, bursts. So it, it just bursts. It all bursts. And the RNA comes out where it enters the nucleus and begins uh, reproducing itself. And when it reproduces, re reproduces itself, it creates mRNA, which is messenger RNA. I'll write that down. Messenger RNA. And this messenger RNA um, uh, creates the protein spikes for a new virus. So what happens is this new, the new RNA gets filtered through the Golgi, or not, uh, my bad, the endoplasmic reticulum, where it enters Golgi bodies, where it's packaged with new protein spikes and a new protein coat. And it protrudes from the from the um, the cell, but that's COVID's case. In different viruses like the flu, it can um, the the protein spikes filter to the um, phospholipid bilayer where they stand. They kind of just sit like this until the new RNA comes up and the new capsid comes up, and it forms a protein coat around it. So, and then it will go on to infect more and. And the, the virion will go on to infect more new viruses, basically. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's a broad thing. And, and viral transmission is really important with that because there's an incubation period with everything. And in COVID's case, um, it takes about, I, I, think the, I think the official numbers, because there's, there's numbers everywhere, take, the official numbers are four to five days but it can also take two weeks. And that's a really big deal because um, viruses like that are really hard to contain, especially asymptomatic viruses like this. And asymptomatic spread happens when the um, virus doesn't kill the cell immediately. So the so your immune system can't see it um, immediately. But anyway, um, yeah, so the uh, viral transmission, it kind of works like um, if you've ever done like geometric progression in like elementary school, it's kind of like this. So one man or woman, one man or woman right here, splits into two. So it's infected, uh, here she's infected two. And then here she, the other two, infect two more. So now there's four infections two more, so it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on, 128, 256, 512, 
1024. So it really just, it goes on and goes on and goes on. See, I'll make, and COVID's a very contagious virus, it really is. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 infections. And that happens through one, two, three, four, five. That happens through five infection cycles, which is crazy. So it multiplies. So in 10 days, um, one second. Please forgive me, I had some background noise. Um, so where was I? So in 10 days, in 10 days, 512 infections. So it, it multiplies very quickly. So the RO for COVID is generally one to two, 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 <laughs> one to two. And that's factored with B, which is the basic unit of time for, uh, for infection. And then T is the mean of the infection periods mean. So the official equation is R O equals B T, lowercase t that is. Um, but other viruses like measles, the measles virus, which is um, very contagious, has a 10%. So 10, so it's really 10 times 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, uh, 10,000, 100,000, and so forth, a million, 10 million, 100 million. It's it's a crazy virus, and that's why they have to contain those things and get your vaccinations because you don't want you don't want something like that going everywhere. Sorry, my perfectionist just have to do this. Um, but yeah, the, so the viruses multiply very quickly. And I love viruses. I think viruses are the most interesting thing. I've been interested in viruses since I was like nine. <laughs> um, but bacteria, sorry about that. Bacteria kind of does the same thing, but bacteria doesn't need to infect a cell. You know, it, it, it doesn't need, and plus, it's much, uh, viruses are much smaller than bacteria. Um, I mean, COVID, for instance, is 1,000th of the width of an eyelash. And with the COVID variants, I, I mean, I think the vaccines will be as, as, um, as protective against COVID variants. But anyway, so viral transmission, that's, that's like the, one of the main things with um, COVID, with pandemics, and how it goes around the world, and how clusters pop up, clusters of virus. And infection, a pandemic has to, has to have a, a type of virus that doesn't kill the host. And COVID is perfect. Um, yes, we should all be extremely careful with COVID because we don't wanna harm our older folks, but younger people generally do not die from uh, COVID-19 and um, it's, a, it's the perfect weapon for the world because it, 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 it weaponizes itself and then it is, it's contagious and it's unstoppable. And when things went bad in March here in the US, um, we all thought it was gonna end. But if you want to look at our graph, our graph's about here. Oops, I'm not in the camera. Our graph is right about here. 
but I'll show you where I think it's going to be. And that's in the that's in the paper I showed you at the beginning. I think because of all this madness going on in Florida, I think it's going to look more like like this. Let's see my dog flying. It's going to look more like that in the next couple of weeks. But vaccines are being produced and. People are getting their vaccines. Um, I hope to get mine soon and uh, get your vaccine. And uh, I can explain that in a later video of how the vaccine works. And it is an mRNA vaccine, Pfizer and Moderna, which are um, the best. And the, I mean, I think it's amazing that we were able to make a vaccine this quickly, but yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna head out. I hope you all like this lesson. Um, and my whiteboard right there. And I hope, and I will be doing these every uh, couple of days. And I'll see you all in the next one. We'll be talking about um, how the vaccine works and uh, viral test and proteins next.